know, the focus here is on the extreme polarization that really you know, blocks consideration of public issues, blocks uh, countries acting. Um, and that's really a critical focus. And that's why so many parts of the world are trying to address the issue. What I'm trying to say, I think with a lot of history and a lot of data, is America is very exceptional. Uh, it really is exceptional in ways that I believe we are already watching a pushback against the kind of polarization and extremism um, that gave us Donald Trump as president. Now, it was a real shock. I, you know, I decided to write my book and the argument that I have here, the data you know, that I'm you know, talking about, you know, comes out of my determination to show that people are really engaged and they got, they got engaged almost immediately. You know, we got engaged uh, with the women, women's march. We had an election you know, with the highest turnout in the history of, you know, of off-year elections. Uh, we had the Democrats with a win twice as big as the Tea Party win that gave us the Republican control over the last uh, you know, decade. And so that you know, should push us to like, step back. I mean, it's hard to step back because the stakes are so high, so much damage is, you know, is happening you know, every day you know, in government you know, by an ultra-right, anti-government, anti-immigrant you know, government, um, that it's, it's hard to step back and say what's really happening here. But what's really happening is we have a Republican Party that at each juncture where we have made big choices about how we become more free as a country or more democratic as a country, at each point when we face these big choices, they decided to resist the changes. You know, the first change was the civil rights laws uh, in the mid-1950s that gave us uh, racial equality. Then they fought the immigration laws that the two parties uh, together in a bipartisan way had created increased immigration and grew the foreign population, foreign, foreign born population in the United States. Um, both parties faced the Supreme Court decisions on abortion. Uh, the Republicans chose to make a constitutional amendment their highest priority and still, whereas the Democrats accepted you know, that uh, decision. And then it all came to fruition with the election of an African-American president, Barack Obama. Uh, and that was div divisive in ways we really didn't really understand in, until now. You know, obviously it was divisive. We had a financial crisis at the time, and so we were all focused you know, on that. But the Tea Party revolt, the social movement, the revolt against him, which changed the Republican Party and gave the Republicans control of all the states, and the Congress as well, and they basically tried to stop government from functioning. And we've really been living through kind of a decade, a Tea Party decade, now that Trump is on top, a Tea Party decade uh, in which government uh, is being uh, crushed at all levels, snuffed out at all levels, anything to stop democratic governance. Uh, and it's produced a kind of a building frustration uh, with the state of the country, with government, and that was true, though, until Trump got elected. You know, in 16, you had change candidates running on both sides. Donald Trump was a change candidate. It was actually for government. Bernie Sanders ran on the Democratic side, was also change and, you know, and for, you know, for government. Donald Trump became only an anti-government candidate as president. Um, and that really shocked people and shocked people into, into action. And we've seen... Um, a, a level of engagement in the midterm elections, the highest turnout uh, uh, in our history, um, and also in a, a focus, even now, thinking, looking ahead to a presidential election, a level of engagement that suggests we're in a different world. People are resisting, they're pushing back, they're becoming more pro-government, more pro-immigration, uh, and that suggests that this may be the one country is putting a marker down that says enough.